Well, for more on the French economy and the EU elections, I'm joined by Jacob Kierkegaard. He's a senior fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Welcome, Jacob. My pleasure. So given how uh, the far-right party is doing against President Emmanuel Macron's party, is this fair to call this a referendum on Macron or the EU, or is something else at play? No, I think it's very clearly, and this is by design, Macron in the last couple of weeks have made it. Um, uh, he has injected himself very forcefully into this uh, campaign. Uh, he's out you know, to rallies, he's giving interviews, uh, and, and this is clearly in response to the otherwise, shall we say, erratic launch of uh, the European campaign by his new party. Uh, Renaissance, where uh, the, the lead candidate, she has not performed uh, particularly well. So he has been forced by circumstances to do this. So absolutely, this is uh, a referendum on his presidency. And a lot of people are looking at uh, Marine Le Pen's far-right party, how much popularity it gained in France. You also have Italy's Matteo Salvini joining Le Pen in their Europe of Nations and Freedom bloc. How do you see this populist movement overall reshaping policies and potentially the bloc? Well, I think, uh, first of all, we should be clear that Marine Le Pen actually won uh, the previous European elections in France. Uh, so she needs to defend that spot. Uh, and currently, she's not polling any better than she did uh, five years ago. Uh, that's very different in Italy, where clearly Matteo Salvini uh, is going to looks like winning a big victory. Uh, but I think it will be very difficult for them uh, to unify the block of nationalist parties that uh, clearly will uh, gain some votes in the European Parliament, but I don't think it will be that many, actually. Uh, and certainly the early results from the Netherlands uh, uh, suggest that uh, the far-right parties may not do very well, uh, in fact. But I think what you will see, and this is partly a direct outcome of the scandal in Austria, uh, where basically you had the far-right party in Austria being exposed as being literally for sale to Vladimir Putin uh, and Russia. What this shows is that it will be very difficult for the right-wing parties in Eastern Europe, in Poland, the Baltic countries, Slovakia and elsewhere, to join a group that is generally pro-Russia. Uh, which is the case for both Marine Le Pen and Matteo Salvini. So I think you're going to have at least two major, if you want, nationalist blocs in the European Parliament, uh, which isn't really that different from what the situation we have today. Uh, and then you have a big joker in what will Nigel Farage do, who will enter the European Parliament perhaps as the single biggest party. So given those uncertainties there, and obviously you have the bloc's first and second biggest trade partners, the US and China, watching the outcome of this. How do you see these elections potentially affecting ties with those two countries? I mean, I think uh, because we know with a fair degree of certainty that the generally pro-European, or if you like, status quo parties, are going to get about two-thirds of the seats in the parliament, uh, that not that much is going to change uh, uh, with the relationship with either the United States or China. But that also means that a lot of flashpoints remain. Uh, you know, there's a lot of trade tension building up between uh, the U.S. and Europe, you know, car tariffs potentially in six months' time. Uh, there is clearly ongoing issues uh, also with China. Uh, on trade, uh, uh, the situation in Xinjiang, and other issues. Uh, so that won't really change. Uh, and in some ways, therefore, in terms of the great power rivalry that in some ways is playing out between China and uh, the United States, Europe is still up for grabs. Uh, no. No, I, I do want to get to, to France's economy. Um, as, we, as we've seen, Macron's popularity has been falling. You've, he had his attempts to modernize the economy with this very pro-business stance in his agenda. But what's he getting right and what's he getting wrong with the French economy? Well, I think he's getting uh, the, the stuff he has tried to reform, particularly the labor markets, he's actually done very well. Uh, the, the, the French unemployment is slowly falling, and you're seeing a shift to more permanent uh, job creation away from sort of temporary contracts. Wages are increasing. Uh, so that he has largely gotten right. Uh, what he hasn't gotten right yet are other issues, the unemployment insurance schemes, pensions. Uh, uh, so, but, you know, he has also said uh, after his clash with the Yellow Vests that that part of his structural reform program is going to proceed. 
Uh, so I think he, uh, if you like, still has uh, a second life of his presidency, the second part of his first term, uh, to complete m many of these reforms. And so far, you've got to say, his, his bribe, you know, 10 billion euros for uh, higher pays and bonuses, have uh, worked out pretty well uh, for him. So just quickly, as we look at some of the campaign promises he's still trying to fill, while also trying to ba you know, balance these national interests, what's your outlook for the French economy for the rest of the year? Um, I think uh, the rest of the euro area, including France, is going to rebound. Uh, it's going to have a much stronger second half than the first half, largely on the back of uh, fiscal stimulus in France, but also in Italy and Germany. So I think the euro area economy as a whole is looking at somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5 percent growth for 2019, very dependent, I mean, basically dependent on what the global trading system uh, will look like and whether there'll be a trade war with the United States. Uh, and that is certainly uh, marks a, a nearly doubling of the pace of growth uh, from the from the initial uh, data that we have uh, for the first part of this year. So basically, I think Europe has bottomed out, and that's the case of the French economy as well. All right. Thank you. Always good to have you on. Jacob Kierkegaard there, Senior Fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics.